Hey, good morning, Drive Time. Welcome back. Uh, as always, I'm Dave Drum. And, you know, I, I always like when I get to bring my friends to you guys. I, I always enjoy sharing the people who are important to me with you guys on this program. And this week, I get to introduce to you a friend of mine, Billy Griffin. He and I have been through uh, just some junk together uh, over the years. And I'm really excited to have him on here. So, Billy, thanks for spending some time with us. And uh, thanks for being on Drive Time. Hey man, I appreciate it. It's always good to get with you and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of drive time already. So just to be able to sit in this spot, it, it's kind of a cool thing. Kind of, I'm starstruck to be honest. Great. Great. Um, we may add that point out, uh, but so guys, here's the thing. And, and I want to throw this line out intentionally um, without any description. Uh, so I asked Billy to come on drive time today, specifically to talk about, the beauty of disappointment. And I think as I say that line, it, it might cause some confusion for you guys, but the reality is we all face disappointment, but being able to find beauty in our disappointment um, is, is a key part of the Christian walk, I believe. And after you guys hear Billy's story, um, I think maybe you'll understand uh, why I'm going to let him tell the story. So, so Billy, if you would just uh, back us up a few years and, and, and uh, fill us in. All right. Well, um, one of the key things is uh, when you, when you hear that, that, you know, that my story is about disappointment, that's kind of a shock in and of itself. You know, nobody wants to be the, the poster child for, for disappointment. Um, but one of the things where all this kind of culminated was uh, a little over seven years ago, my, my wife and I were pregnant and expecting the child. And, you know, you go through those same feelings of what you want that child to be, what, you, you know, you, you plan out the, the child's whole life while they're in the womb. And, and um, when our son Cooper was born, he was born with, um, with Down syndrome. And that was something that we didn't know. We took, you know, we didn't take the test. We decided that that was something that we didn't really want to get into. So as Cooper was born, that's when we found out. And, um, you know, when that happened, every emotion went through my mind and, you know, we, we experienced the joy of, Hey, our child's here. We experienced the, you know, the elation of, of having a, a, a baby, but then there was the, the anger of why this happened to us. There was the disappointment that you talked about. And it's like, Oh, you know, that we didn't really know how we didn't know what, why any of that. So that's where kind of that glorious disappointment started. And, and, if, if I'm being honest and, and, and as transparent as I can, it was a bummer. Uh, you, you, you know, we, we have two other boys and, and, and they're, they're um, typical kids, you know, one's 19 and one's about to turn 16. So it didn't go according to plan at all, but I want to back up even further in our, in our journey was um, we'd had some fertility issues. So we were at the doctors. I, I'd gone to get checked. My wife had been checked and everything was fine. So all the, all the pressure was on me. You know, this is, this is why we're not getting anything done and, and, and all that. So, um, but the day I, I remember distinctly sitting in the doctor's office and he said, well, you know, I'm not saying you're not going to get pregnant, but it, it's going to be pretty difficult and it's going to be a, uh, a, a very challenging road ahead of you. But what we didn't know was as we sat in the doctor's office, my wife, Harmony was already pregnant. So, you know, here you have a doctor telling you, like, Hey, you're not going to be able to have, have any more kids. This is what's going on. And then boom, you know, the Lord kind of said, I'll show that doctor, you, you know? So we're sitting in the doctor's office about fertility pregnant. So that's where Cooper's journey started. And, um, you, you know, we, it was a difficult pregnancy and we didn't think anything of it. You, you know, it, looking back, there were signs that said, Hey, we probably should have looked at this or we probably should have looked at that, but none of our medical 
team, you know, none of my wife's team um, had really said, this is an option. You may want to get ready for this. So um, I remember it was, it was around Halloween and where, where my wife's doctor was, there was a children's center. And I remember a bus stopping by and, and the, the bus, you know, all the kids were dressed in their Halloween costumes, but there was a, it was a, a bus of special needs kids. There was kids in wheelchairs, walkers, you know, blind kids. And there was a couple of kids with down syndrome. And, and we were like, wow, how cute is that? How awesome is that? And looking back, we see those little kind of road signs that, that, that the Lord had kind of placed in our path. So Cooper's born, like I said, it was a difficult pregnancy and my wife, we did an emergency C-section. Um, he was almost a month early. He was right at three weeks early. And, um, so they kind of explained, this is what's going to happen. If he doesn't start breathing on his own, we're going to move him to, you know, the NICU and, and kind of work with him there. So everything was going according to plan. You, you know, um, I go with Cooper to the NICU and the lady begins to explain, well, you know, and granted two hours before I was at work, <laughs> you know, and now here I am with, with a child, a, a, a wife and that's, that's recovering. And now I have this new child. So the, the nurse began to explain things like when we have a down syndrome child, this is what it looks like. This is what we look for. And I stopped and I'm, I, you know, I said, is this just kind of a random thing or are you trying, is this normal or are you saying that my, my child has down syndrome? And she said, well, we have to confirm it with the blood blood work, but you know, based on my training experience and, and everything that goes with that, your child has down syndrome. And I'm like, wow, it's not what I expected at all. And um, so I just kind of, it, it I had a, a group of nurses or, you know, the NICU nurses around us. It's kind of an orientation to NICU, I guess. And my wife was in the, in the room recovery. Now her parents had arrived. And, and I remember I had to walk that hallway. It seems like the longest hallway ever. And I had to go back and explain, Hey, all everything that we had hoped for, all the plans that we had, they're now on hold because Cooper has Down syndrome. And I feel guilty about that now, you know, because it was almost as if I doubted, doubted the Lord. And, you know, like I said, next couple of days, um, my wife was recovering. She, she had some issues where she had to be readmitted after the birth. So there was a couple of days where I had, Harmony on one floor and then Cooper in the NICU on another floor. And, and I remember sitting in the hospital and just kind of, you, you know, you get that spirit of prayer. It, it's not like a, you're just a continual prayer. It's just kind of popcorn, you know, you know, as things come to your heart and come to your mind and, I, and the Lord gave me this verse, and I want to read it out of John chapter nine, verse three. And it was the story where, Jesus is dealing with the, um, the man who was blind and, you know, they're asking Jesus all these questions as to why, you know, why this he's done nothing. And Jesus, his reply has, has been a verse that I've tagged Cooper from that day. And it says, this has happened so that the work of God might be displayed in life. So, I took that literal, you, you, you know, that God has placed Cooper in his condition in our life so that his glory can be displayed. And he, that's, that's a great undertaking. You, you know, that's, that's pressure. You, you know, it, for me, it was like, well, I barely can keep my life afloat. You know, I can barely keep, me in, in line and on task 
but now I've got this, you know, kind of felt like Mary and Joseph, maybe, <laughs> you know, now I've got this child who, who has a, who has a calling who had been placed in my life for a specific reason. And, you know, but that disappointment, I, it was, I, I wrestled with that and wrestled with it for a while. Well, let's, uh, <clears throat> I want to jump back into the story with you. Okay. Um, because I remember the, the night you called me uh, after Cooper was born. And if I, if I remember remembering correctly, you were driving home from the hospital um, and Cooper was still in the NICU. And you were, you were telling me like, Hey, Cooper's got downs. We're waiting on the blood test, but you know, this is, this is what everybody thinks is going to happen. And I remember you to some degree lamenting the man I thought, but still very early on days old, very much to the mindset. Yeah. I thought, but this is what God's given us. And it's, I think it's an example that we can all follow in our, in our own disappointments, whether it's with a child or with a career or whatever. I and mean, you could almost input that thought process. You bring that to God, the, but I thought, you know, God, I thought, but, and, and, and you rolled out these thought processes that still stick with me now, seven years later doing this program that I'm like, Hey, I, I need Billy to come on here and talk about Cooper. Um, because you were still praising God. You were still thankful for your son. You were still excited for what his life was going to hold. And, you know, one of the things you, you talked about was sports. I know sports is a big thing for you. Um, you played sports, your other sons play sports. You, you enjoyed the thought process of watching Cooper growing up playing sports. And this is one of the cool things that I think where the picture doesn't look the same, but the picture is pretty amazing. So um, tell us about that. Tell us about uh, Cooper's storied sports career at seven years old. <laughs> Cooper has become quite the, quite the celebrity. Um, you know, here we are it, about three, three, four years ago, um, I came in contact with the football program at Riverdale high school and I came, I, I came across them through, uh, a relationship that they had kind of began at, at Cooper school. They, the, the, the players were there to help with a uh, parent pickup, walking kids to class, you, you know, so on and so, so forth. And, and Cooper kind of dug that and, you know, no big deal. We, we just kind of followed through with it. Well, one day we got called to the principal's office, you know, and out of all kids to be called to the principal's office, we, we didn't think ours would be the one, but um, we went to the principal's office that day and, and the principal was there and, and about seven or eight football players and the football coach. And, and they presented Cooper with a Jersey and says, we fell in love with Cooper and we want him to be our captain for senior night. And for me, I knew what an honor that was, you know, senior night, that's when you elect a captain and when you allow somebody to be a captain, that's, that's a pretty big thing. And, and for them to have embraced Cooper like they have had, was, was big to me. And, and, you know, there was local media coverage. There was, um, you know, it was all over the place for a while. And, and, and we, as a family, we had even received, um, text and conversations from other countries all over the, you know, different families from across the United States, um, Austria. Uh, I think there was an Australia, you know, things like that. So even that we began seeing the power of, of Cooper, you know, is, is what we, we call it. And, and to this day, Cooper is still a very vital part of that program. And, um, it's, it's amazing to see him interact with these, these athletes. And it's amazing to see the athletes interact with him. And, um, one of the things that I've seen and not just in the sports area, but one of the blessings that we have as Cooper's parents is we get to see God minister through Cooper. 
And what I mean by that is, is for the longest time, it'd be in the grocery, you know, be in the shopping cart, you know, at Target or, or, or Publix or wh wherever we were at. And Cooper would, would greet people. And, you know, some of those people you're like, well, you know, probably shouldn't be talking to them or, you know, he, he has challenged me. If I could have one wish, it would be to see the world through Cooper's eyes. You know, Cooper doesn't see negativity. Cooper doesn't see color. He doesn't see differences. And I think for the biggest part is Cooper sees people like Jesus does, you, you know, and, and so whether it's a, an 80 year old woman or, you know, um, a, a guy that just was released from prison, you, you know, Cooper has a way of melting them down and he's, he's always quick to, to high five or, you know, fist bump or, or even, even hug those. And, and there's been countless times when people walk away from that, just melted and, 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 and broken. And, and, and I, I, I believe that God knows those people need that, you know, cause his reaction is not the same to everybody. So I think God uses Cooper to minister to those people in ways that you and I and and our church staff and, and never can. So to, to say that I'm disappointed, was disappointed. It, it seems such a far away concept now, because I love the fact that I get to watch this, you, you know, that I get to, to, to be a part of this young man's life and, and get to see what, what the Lord is doing through him with no special abilities. You know, he's, he's never going to be, um, he, he, you know, uh, I don't want to say never, but, but he doesn't have those church gifts that you always think about, you know, singing or, or preaching or, 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 you know, biblical intellect, but he's got a heart and he knows how to just love people. And, and, and God always places him in the right spot with the right people to, to love on those people. Well, and and that's what I love about, you know, as you and I talk through recording this video um, and that concept of, of the, the beauty of disappointment is, like you said, that you and I are never going to see the world like Cooper sees the world. Right. And, you know, for his in inability to see jealousy and envy, I'm, I'm jealous and envious of him for that. Right. Um, so, and, and I love that you see it as God ministering to people through Cooper, because I, I, I do think a lot of people just assume that uh, the disabled or, you know, whether physically or mentally challenged uh, people can't or aren't qualified to minister at a level of other people. And the reality is, um, you know, people are going to uh, interact with Cooper differently. And, uh, that's a good thing. That's, that's a good thing. So, all right, as we, as we finish up here, um, as you know, being on drive time, we, we love that challenge about getting 1% better each week and, and that tangible takeaway. So let's face it. Not everybody's going to get that news that their kid has downs or a disability. Um, but we all face disappointment. So if you would, can you give us, the takeaway for this week, the challenge of how to get 1% better um, for the guys who are watching in terms of how we deal with disappointment in our life. I, I want to share just a little bit about how it, how that glorious disappointment can be in, a, in just everyday life. And, and what, I, what I mean by that is how many times have we, you know, spilled our coffee or, you know, gotten behind a, the wrong car on our way to work when we're in a hurry, you know, or we, we, we don't leave the house and we're running late and, and we, we get stuck. And then up the road, we see a traffic accident, you know, we're like, ah, oh, I'm running late. But then we come across something and you're like, you know, that, that could very well be the Lord's hand in, in, in protecting me and, and, and protecting others and, and protecting my family. And, and the thing that I've learned is, is that, I have to look at those for what they are. 
and not to, to minimize them. And my challenge for this week is to look at those things, look at those daily occurrences um, and be thankful for, it. You, you, you know, it, trust is, you, you know, you got to have that trust in the Lord and know that he's going to do everything that he can to do, to protect you, to, to, to love you and to provide you with the things that are best. And sometimes that's not necessarily going to match up with our game plan. You know, there's going to be those disappointments and we need to, to look beyond ourselves and look into how is that applicable? So this week, I, do, I just want to encourage people to, to look beyond that disappointment and look for a deeper, um, a deeper meaning, a deeper uh, purpose in that and, and kind of fully surrender that to the, to the will of the Lord. And that's great. Um, and it's always good to, <clears throat> I guess, adjust our perspectives back to in line with, with God's perspective. And, and sometimes it takes a little bit of disappointment to, to shake us loose from what we think we want. So Billy, thanks for, for being on uh, drive time today. Thanks for, for sharing Cooper's story with us. Um, I, I'd like to say it, it's been a, a, a privilege to be along for the ride and to watch some of this happen. Um, but uh, gentlemen, we'll see you again next week here on drive time. Billy, thanks for being with us today.